So it seemed that it was cool for everyone to be in a relationship but me. So I took matters into my own hands and ended up with him. He would display the characteristics of a cheater, a liar, an abuser and a thief. So why was I so surprised when he broke into my heart? I called 911 but I was cardiac arrested for aiding and abetting because it was me who let him in claiming we were just friends. It was rather decided for me by the first date that even if he wasn't the one, I was going to make him the one. You know, I was tired of being alone and simply made up in my mind that it was about that time. So I decided to drag him along for the ride because I was always the bridesmaid and never the bride of virgin in the physical but mentally just a grown woman on the corner in heat who was tired of the weight. So I was going to make him the one. He had a form of godliness but not much but hey, hey, I can change him so I'll take him and mean his close enough rather to sell my iota for a quarter not knowing the value of its use to me a tree so clogged with my will it blocked his will from flowing through me so i thank christ that his blood pressure gave this heart an affair the flat line my obscured vision put me flat on my back through my ignorance he saw so through my stain of his sword and cracked up on my chest to transplant some 51 verse 10 a new heart and a renewed right spirit within so now i fully understand better yet i thoroughly comprehend how much I need to wait for you see the bad thing is I knew it wasn't you from the beginning cause in the beginning was the word and he didn't even sound or shine like your son out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and all he could whisper was sweet empty nothings which meant nothing he couldn't even have prayed when I needed him to so asking him to fast would be absurd so forget about being cleansed with water and washed with water through the word but I know you you're already praying for me, even never having met me. So let me assure you that I will wait for you. I will no longer socialize or communicate with carbon copies of you to appease my boredom or to quench my thirsty desire I have for attention and short-lived compliments from certain kinders. You know, he's sort of kind of right, but sort of kind of wrong. His first name look, his last name warm. I, I won't settle for false companionship. I won't lay in the embrace of his arms attempting to find some closeness but never feeling so far apart cause I just want to be held. Cause all I gotta do is say no. No more almost sessions of almost coming close, passing wings and buying drinks and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a flat or flat with the ideology of can you just tell me how much I can get away with and still be considered safe? No more. I will lay in my bed alone and write poems about how I will wait for you. He won't even come close. Our fingers won't even interlock. We won't ex even exchange same breath. Cause I have thoughts that I have saved us in a file that God has only you equipped to open. I will no longer get weighed down from so-called friends and family talks about the consign from a biological clock when I serve the author of time. Who is not subject to time but I am subject to him. He has the ability to stop, fast forward, pause or rewind at any given time. So if we could role play, you would be Abraham and I could be Sarah or you could be Isaac and I could be your Rebecca, a servant answered prayer. I am born of your bone, flesh of your flesh, made up of your rib, Adam, and once we meet like electrons, I will be bound to your nucleus completely in the visible atom. We even speak the same math, 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3, which really equals 1 if we add him. We were all created in his image, but you, you have the ability to reflect, project, and even detect the sun. If I were to explain what you would look like, you would have to look like a star, a son of the sun. I would gain energy simply from the light that you shine on me. I would need you in order to complete my photosynthesis. I await your revelation, but once again from the Genesis, I will wait for you. And I will know you because when you speak, I will be reminded of Solomon's wisdom. Your ability to lead will remind me of Moses. Your faith will remind me of Abraham. Your confidence in God's word will remind me of Daniel. Your inspiration will remind me of Paul. Your heart for God will remind me of David. Your attention to details will remind me of Joseph. And your ability to abandon your own will will remind me of the disciples 
but your ability to love selflessly and unconditionally will remind me of Christ. But I won't need to identify you by some special Matthews or some special Marks because his word will be tattered all over your heart and you will know me and you will find me where the boldness of Esther meets the warm closeness of Ruth, where the hospitality of Lydia is aligned with the submission of Mary, which is engulfed in the tears of a praying Hannah. I will be the one drenched in Proverbs 31 waiting for you. But to my father, my father who has known me before I was birthed into this earth, only if you see it fit. I desire your will above mine. So even if you call me to a life of singleness, my heart is content with you, the one who was sent. You are the greatest love story ever told, the greatest love ever known. You are forever my judge and I'm forever your witness. And I pray that I'm always found on a mission about my father's business. I will always be yours and I will always wait for you, Lord more than the watchmen wait for the morning more than the watchmen wait for the morning i will wait